The video yeah. starts with this e-hailing taxi driving along the street in a township in South Africa. The man can be seen looking down at the phone on his lap as he possibly tries to follow the GPS. This can also be a disadvantage in this line of work as it can be a distraction. The best solution can be to utilize a stand which can be fitted onto the car. Where to place the stand is also of paramount importance as to not let the phone be visible from outside yeah. mostly in South Africa. The man continues to drive along the street as he approached the location where the person had requested from. E-hailing taxi drivers have one of the most dangerous jobs in the nation of South Africa. They are often targeted by culprits mostly for their phones and money, and in other cases the cars can be hijacked and stolen. We see as the man drives through these narrow spaces. This was in Philippi in Cape Town. This area is known to be one of the most dangerous places in South Africa. Most e-hailing taxi companies warn drivers when entering or passing through these red zones. The man finally arrives at the location as we see him try to find a safe space to park the vehicle before the customer arrived, but he had no idea what was about to happen soon. Ooh. I think that's a first red flag. The fact that um, she's wearing shades, that was the first red flag. She, she has to be part of this operation. Uh, trust me. <clears throat> she, These two women are part of this operation. Hence, they do look like people who are trying to hide themselves. Uh, the other one is not wearing shades, but she's also um, wearing uh, you know, a headscarf. But... You can see that something is up here. Like, you can see that something is about to happen. More and more suspicious as the people seem to be taking too long to finish loading and boarding the vehicle. They finally entered the vehicle, but the driver insisted on taking only two people. This is mostly for the driver's safety. The culprits suddenly opened the door as it became clear what this was from the start. The women had played their part, and the men were now completing the circus show. It's astonishing how people can dress up for this clownish behavior, living off robbing hard-working people. We see as the men take what they deemed valuable from the vehicle. Props to the driver for staying calm here in this dangerous situation. That culprit has a whole broken hand, possibly due to antics like these, but the man continues to rob the driver. The man pleads for his life, as he tries to explain that he had nothing else to give. Despite the calmness here, this is one of the most dangerous situation to be in. These culprits are known to be unpredictable. They have no regard for human life and are mostly armed with illegal firearms and knives. These clowns were not satisfied with what they had already taken here as they continue to pressure this man. They were convinced he was hiding more valuable somewhere. They just want everything. It's, it's shameless. No, it's sad what's happening in South Africa. I mean, this guy is just trying, you know, uh, his level best to feed his family and himself. He's trying to survive. And then something bad like this happens. Man, it's really sad. It's, it's really sad. And I, I don't know if you noticed, the minute um, uh, that guy pulled, you know, the driver's door, those two ladies just get off the car. You know, like they understood the assignment, you know. So I'm 100% sure now that these, those two ladies were part of this operation because they knew everything that was going to happen you know if it was someone innocent they would also you know show you know their faces to be surprised you know? it would have it would have shown we would have seen them being surprised of what was happening but they were not surprised at all they knew what was going to happen they knew who was going to do what they knew their scope like they knew what they had to do from uh, the get-go and until you know their last part and then now this guy is just getting up it's really sad it's tough for e for e hailing drivers in south africa <laughs> They even took the man's hat. The one-hand man must not have been satisfied with the red one he already owned. I hope he gets out safe in this situation. He's already lost almost all his belongings except his car and his clothes right now. So I just hope 
he gets off safe. Ooh. This broken hand man was definitely taking this personal. The driver had a chance to finish the job there, but the man was a bit shaken from this experience. He finally had enough and rushed off. The they're still running. They're still trying to run after him. That's really, really shameless. Like he did nothing wrong to this nobody. This was truly terrifying for the driver. Luckily, he survived this ordeal. Oof. This man won't be visiting this place in his lifetime Never. after that experience. On our next video, we first see two buses and a minibus at a station in South Africa. The scene looked peaceful, but what was about to happen next was unbelievable. We see as a car approaches the area stopping right behind the minibus. Suddenly men came from another vehicle going straight to the stop car. This looked like a daylight robbery at first, but there was more to the story. In South Africa, most of the public use these minibuses for transportation. This industry is mostly controlled by what is called the Taxi Association. This leads to clashes between these associations and any other competitors in the industry. In this case, the e-hailing driver had been caught in the wrong place at the wrong time here. This was probably to make an example of the man and discourage drivers from taking e-hailing taxi driving jobs. These confrontations can be deadly in some cases as the men associated with these associations are known to be extremely dangerous and ruthless in the nation of South Africa. The assault continued as they dragged the man to the other minibus stopped right behind the car. You know, the sad part here is that uh, they should have been police, you know, intervening in this situation. But where are the police in this instance? Hence, I always say there is no visible policing in South Africa. It really, really doesn't work. Like, it's not effective in trying to curb crime because everyone does as they please, you know. It's a free country at the end of the day. That's what they say. I think right now this guy was trying to request. Then the car just arrived. At the same time, we see other men approaching from the same direction the first Ooh. culprit had emerged from. Ooh. Once they were close enough, it was too late for the yes, driver. Sis. They immediately pounced on the man. Yes. This shows how difficult this situation can be for drivers as they are attacked from different directions. About 10 men against one. What a deadly situation. Most of the people who are involved here seem to be young. It's astonishing how these young men think of schemes like these in numbers. E-hailing services tend to warn drivers about certain routes and locations due to these actions. This directly affects the innocent people in these communities as they end up receiving less and less services with drivers not willing to risk getting robbed or losing their lives. Whew. What a tough situation. Uh, what a tough and deadly situation and it's really said that most people who are doing this are young people uh, I don't want to blame unemployment because nah nah man You can't always be being un unemployment Sometimes it has to do with one's personality and how um, you know one was you know um, What with, with how one grew up you know from a very young age you know growing up in the Cape Flats does influence how one uh, most people uh, become, you know, when they grow up. So I don't, I don't really want to blame uh, unemployment because most of these people don't even go to school, even though education is free in South Africa. It's really tough being an e-hailing driver in South Africa, and we can't we can't only refer to you know the dangers that taxi drivers go through. Uh, we should also consider, um, you know. The passenger as well. I mean, imagine being in that kind of a situation where 
uh, the meter taxi or the taxi association people you know try and hijack an e-hailing driver and you're in that car you're watching every scene you know what you're watching the assault or maybe they, they kidnap the driver take his car take you with them to wherever they're going and then you get to witness everything as an innocent passenger it's really really sad it's really sad and I, I, another issue that we have to mention is the fact that the economy is tough uh, unemployment is really leading most people into this industry of e-hailing because some of them lose their jobs uh, you know uh, some lose their jobs and then they take whatever money they have buy a car and put it in under uber bolt uh, in drive whatever just to try and make ends meet you know just to try and work to feed their families just to try and survive and then when they're trying that on the other hand they have to deal with criminals they have to deal with the with the taxi association they have to deal with these what well, these guys who are driving me to taxis it's really really sad it's it's so sad but anyway i hope the minister of uh, of police <laughs> almost a list of crime <laughs> but with the with with the you know the crime rate in south africa i think we might have a minister of crime but then yeah the minister of police i hope um he's saying this i hope they do their best you know to beef up uh the police system you know but <sighs> you saw what happened in johannesburg with that e-hailing driver uh who was attacked by uh, the tax association people so if visible policing as they call it was effective he will, nothing like that would have wouldn't have happened i mean he was going to get assistance from the police but the fact that visible policing is ineffective and is just there to waste the state's money you know you still get things like that happening in south africa in the city like in the cbd guys come on in the cb not in the outskirts not in the bushes somewhere in the bundles in the cbd you still get people uh who do that freely without any fear of the police or the law so the lawlessness in this country is at the peak right now. Anyway, uh, thank you, Graham, for such a wonderful video. Um, from a burnt Tanetenga from South Africa. That's it for me today. Dream Venture Reborn. We love you all to the world. Remember, if you are new to this channel, we really appreciate you. And uh, stick around for some more content. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell button. Whatever I post another video, you get the notification and you get to watch the video first. And if you did enjoy this video, which I'm sure you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. And feel free to share this video with other YouTubers who may think might really enjoy watching similar content. From Burnt and the Tango from South Africa to the world, Narazawa Tutiri. I'll see you on another video. Ciao.